So we're going to talk about some of the trends we've been seeing with the ESP chips and some of our smart home devices. And yeah, that's for doing local control in our home. Now we're going to start off with an outro that we showed in a previous video. And you, most people probably didn't watch those, which is understandable, but maybe you should watch them sometimes. There's sometimes some good stuff in there. So if you've already seen it, yeah, you can use the little skippy thing down at the bottom. And well, if you don't want to see it, hit that dislike button, hit that X up there, and I'll see you in the next one. You can hang around. Here's the clip. Let's address the whole maybe the sky is falling thing. Now, as we know previously in the past, and we even talked about it in the two year convert, that they were changing some of the chipsets in the various smart devices to non ESP chips. And basically, I thought that was due to maybe the cost and they were the cheaper chipsets combined with some of the chipsets had better features and functions that allowed a manufacturer to make a cheaper product and not necessarily a bad value product. It was just cheaper to get it out the door. If you remember the fan controller, that's the fan dimmer controller by Treat Life. I did a whole blog post and showed it in the video with the jig and everything that was ESP based. Well, Treat Life came out with another fan controller without the dimmer part. And I'm sure many people asked for that, that, hey, I just want the fan control. I don't want dimmer inside that fan controller. And thanks to Boiler Boy on Discord, he shared some pictures of that fan controller and that was the secondary MCU combined with a different chipset. So it totally blows that out. I was thinking that the reason why maybe they had a different chipset was to get rid of the secondary MCU and just have one chip instead of two. Saves cost, right? Well, they just jumped to another chip. I don't really know. You kind of have to do your own research. But for me, I'm going to say I'm going to get while the getting's good and get the smart switches and smart devices that I need in my home. Because I don't know who's gonna change and you just never know when and maybe one of your smart switches that you were thinking about getting, you could change chipsets one day and well, you might be saying like I have in the past, man, I wish I would have bought a bunch of those. And well, I recently did, maybe. Still miss that old version though, Lohas. So, I after that clip, I did have some questions from various people of, well, is this the end of the world for ESP Home and Tasmoda, ESP Easy, etc.? Probably not. I mean, it's really going to limit us. It's going to kind of go full circle, possibly, where if you remember back what I talked about in the smart switch video, we just really had sewn off basics and we had to put them in the walls and everything. And now you look at it, we've got all these various types of switches and everything we can pick out of. But as things progress, you know, and there's different security articles and oh my God, people are hacking the smart switches in our homes and taking them out of the walls and attaching wires to them. Yeah, yeah, that just doesn't happen. But you know, there, there's some doom and gloom people out there. Well, and I do understand they do need to patch various exploits because then another competitor could come along and say, hey, we don't have that problem the other guy has. Luckily, there are some companies that are listening to us. Like, well, for instance, I've seen the Martin Jerry three-way dimmer. I did a video a long time ago on that one. Well, the three-way dimmer actually switched back to an ESP chip. Don't normally see that. So maybe Martin Jerry is listening to us. There's various other companies that are providing ESP based devices that come pre flashed with ESP home or TAS motor or whatever you pick in the little drop down and get them sent right to you and you don't have to flash anything and it's just straight local control. Now, of course, there is a little more cost to that, but they've done the work for you. So sometimes we are our own enemies and no not that enemy but it's basically you know we've gone back and forth with to your convert trying the different exploits and converting all these things and it's been great well but then of course as you know they've done a lot of locking us out over the past year and now we've re gone back to manual flashing again our own enemy with the jig per se so they are changing out the chipsets on a lot of chips or switches or in devices or whatever it might be. Luckily, 
those little modules are usually pin for pin and you can do a transplant like shown here. And it's not too hard to do, but I know it's beyond the skill level of many people, including myself. I haven't tried it yet, but maybe I'll be trying that soon. So we've seen the somewhat switch to the Realtek chipset. Well, luckily there is a Arduino library for it that you can now compile your own code for the Realtek, but it's really new in the way things are. I haven't seen any big projects for it yet. Maybe we'll see something soon with that, I hope. And if you're looking for the information on how to compile your own Realtek chipsets and Arduino code, I'll leave the links down below as always. And if I do forget, definitely shoot me a comment because sometimes I do forget to leave information in there and just leave me a comment and I'll throw it in the description. So what does all this mean? I would definitely, if you can contact anyone at various companies and manufacturers that are doing switches and LED controllers, say it be Shelly and Treat Life, whoever it might be, even Sonoff, definitely let them know that if they continue to use ESP8285, 8266, those the same things, there, you'll continue to buy their products because you do like to do local control. Usually a company's not too bad on, you know, taking your money, right? You know, if you're gonna go somewhere else, that's just a loss for them. So definitely let them know that you're not happy if they changed your favorite product to some other chipset. We may be a small voice out here in the world, but you never know if enough of us band together, we could get some manufacturers that just make some ESP based products just for the local control market. You just never know what happens if we just speak up enough. Now, some of the newer chips we've seen are not even real tech based. And maybe if you do have some information or you can find some additional SDK or whatever on these types of chipsets, please let us know down in the comments down below. And I do appreciate all the subscribers. We did hit a little milestone here right after the new year. So definitely opens up a new thing for 2021 and I do appreciate it. And speaking of 2021, if there's some different videos and different projects you would like to see done on the channel, leave us a comment down below. I'd love to hear about them. Maybe we could do a thing on them. And don't forget, come join us out in Discord and maybe have further discussion on this. So I appreciate all the Patreon subscribers. Definitely helps out with new projects and new videos all the time. And yep, you already know the drill. Button's down there and y'all take care. Damn, I even rhymed. Or was that corny? Cool? Yep.